Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse is crushing it at the box office right now. That's my little man. And with Spider-Man fighting alongside and against other Spider-People in that movie, it got me wondering who would win in a tussle between Peter Parker and Miles Morales. You? Wait, you? Although these two webheads are very similar, they are also very oh, different. No way. Like, uh, from alternate universes, kind of different. And I kind of want to know who would win in a scrap, don't you? Nah. And well, wait no further, because this is Peter Parker versus Miles Morales. Who wins? Let's find out. I know you all know everything there is to know about two of the most well-known characters in Marvel history. Before I just go into getting into the jabs and the kicks and the nitty and the gritty of things and stooging who would win between these two in a fight, I am going to recap a little bit of these characters' histories. Although Peter Parker and Miles Morales are similar in powers, costumes, and superhero names, they're actually very different in physical attributes. The first and most glaring of which is the fact that they're both from two entirely different universes, but we'll circle back around and unpack that a little more later on. So Peter Parker, got hit by a radioactive spider and then he lost his Uncle Ben. You know, with great power comes great responsibility and now he's the friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. <laughs> Get it? Yeah, you got it. Good, good. Now, Miles Morales' origin story isn't quite as universally known as his spider constituent Peter Parker's, so I will not breeze through it just as quickly, but don't worry. We're getting to the powers and all the violent stuff, I promise. So Miles Morales is a teenager from Brooklyn, New York. Except it's not the Brooklyn from Marvel's primary universe, Earth-616, where the aforementioned Peter Parker is from, but Miles is from the Brooklyn on Earth-1610, otherwise known as Marvel's yeah. Ultimate Universe. Yeah. Einstein said time was relative, right? Miles was bitten by a genetically altered spider and became the Spider-Man of the Ultimate Universe after the death of that universe's Peter Parker, who was known as Ultimate Spider-Man up until that point. The spider that sunk its teeth into Miles did so after being let loose in his apartment by his uncle, Aaron Davis. Miles' Uncle Aaron is not like Peter's Uncle Ben, all full of inspirational quotes and stuff. Rather, Uncle Aaron is the Prowler, a professional thief. Prowler broke into Osborne Industries and the spider snuck into his bag, crawling out back at home and nibbling on Miles. Now, I bet you're thinking that Peter Parker from Earth-616 and Miles Morales from Earth-1610 are basically the same thing, and that if they fought, it would be a tie. And there's no way to really even find out because they're from different universes, right? Wrong. Oh, wrong, 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 wrong. Earth-616 and Earth-1610 have always been closely related and have overlapped multiple times. I see you. Furthermore, Miles and Peter have not only teamed up and fought with each other, spoiler alert again, we'll talk about that later, but Miles' universe and history was even merged into the main Marvel timeline. In the comics, an incursion event threatened to wipe out the entire Ultimate Universe, and it did, sort of, to make a long story short. Miles' entire history, lineage, family and friends, and key details of his existence transferred over and merged with Earth-616. Yeah! So, primary Miles Morales and primary Peter Parker exist in the same universe at the same time, as simultaneous Spider-Mans. Well, sometimes Miles gets referred to as Kid Arachnid, but that's neither here nor there. Remember earlier how I brought up Ultimate Spider-Man, Peter Parker, from Earth-1610? Well, what about the Miles Morales from the Earth-616 universe? Is he a Spider-Man too? No. He isn't. And oh, you, you want to know more about that. Okay. Miles Morales from Earth-616 is actually a supervillain called Ultimatum. Basically, Ultimatum doesn't have superpowers, but he has traveled the multiverse, stealing alternate versions of weaponry from variants of the Avengers. Giant Man's suit, Iron Man's gauntlet, Captain America's shield. Miles will use whatever he can get his hands on. Now, some of these tools would definitely come in handy in a scrap against Spider-Man, but that's not the version of Miles that we're talking about here. We're talking two spectacular, amazing Spider-Men throwing down. Now, before I go explaining how or why Spider-Man would beat Spider-Man, or vice versa, I guess, I first need to explain the similarities and the differences in their powers and their fighting styles. Yes, they're both Spider-Dudes. And yes, they have the majority of the same base powers. 
No, they are not the same in every single facet. Let's break some of these attributes down. First up, spider physiology. Peter Parker possesses the proportionate powers of a radioactive spider, which mutated him, granting him, uh, let me read this here, enhanced chromosome pattern, whatever that means. Miles Morales is the exact same, but as I mentioned before, his spider was genetically modified with Oz formula. Both heroes possess what I like to call the superhuman works. Superhuman strength, speed, stamina, durability, agility, reflexes, and equilibrium are standard for any spider person. Also, both Peter and Miles are capable of wall crawling, and in the comics, both characters use web shooters to shoot, uh, well, webs. Peter Parker, of course, designed his, whereas Miles was gifted the deceased Peter's web shooters from his universe by Aunt May. Morales then had his web shooters upgraded by S.H.I.E.L.D., so their functionality is top-notch, but Peter literally invented this wheel and will always have a one-up in the web shooter department as far as I'm concerned. So, um, yeah, we're gonna give one point to Peter Parker there. Both heroes also possess their world-famous spider sense, and here's where another distinction lies between the two. Although Peter Parker's spider sense is tremendously effective in alerting him of incoming danger and can even tap into radio frequencies, it's said that Miles Morales' spider sense is far more powerful. Now, the precise nature of this sense is unknown, and when it comes to Pete, the Master Weaver states his spidey sense is enabled by his connection to the web of life and destiny, which is super intense. And yeah, we will dig deeper into that too in a bit. Kid Arachnid's spider senses may be connected to the web of life in the same way. I mean, both characters are spider totems after all, but Miles's are thought to be borderline precognitive, as opposed to only warning of immediate danger. Miles has been able to simply know when Electro even planned to harm him from across the city. So point for Miles. Both Spider-Men have regenerative healing factors, although it does appear Miles's may work a little better and faster. However, Parker is older, tougher, and more durable, so no point given as far as longevity is concerned, for now. The most glaring difference between both of their powers lies in the fact that Morales possesses a couple of abilities that Peter Parker does not. And boy, are they difference makers? First off, Miles is capable of camouflaging himself. He and his clothing can camouflage to whatever surrounding, and he can sneak up on people easier than a Spider-Man already can. <laughs> Secondly, and most importantly, Miles Morales possesses the ability to charge up electricity and use what is known as a Venom Strike. No, these Venom Strikes or Venom Blasts are not connected to the symbiote, but oddly enough, they are more closely related to Spider-Woman Jessica Drew, who is also capable of utilizing this Venom Stinger ability. Miles has used these Venom Strikes to take out any and every opponent he's ever faced. They have bailed him out of countless scenarios, and the true extent of their offensive powers are unknown. That being said, these two unique abilities don't necessarily erase what good old Peter has to offer. See, Peter Parker is a full-blown genius. He is a brilliant scientist, inventor, engineer, and he's also an exceptional leader. Peter has a vastly gifted intellect and has also invented all sorts of vehicles and suits and game-changing technologies like the infamous web shooters I mentioned a moment ago. I'm sure most people will be quick to say, but camouflage and, and uh, venom strikes, they're better than intellect and science. Irony aside, and unbeknownst to a lot of even the most hardcore of spider stands, Peter Parker is also capable of unleashing a stinging touch. However, Peter's is much more vile and violent and will not only maim, but scar his adversaries for life. Kane is the relatively amoral clone of Peter Parker who revealed that both of them are capable of using this ability, aptly dubbed the Mark of Cain. So hear me out here, because a lot of you are going to disagree, but Peter's ingenuity and Miles' camouflage cancel each other out. But Peter's Mark of Cain puts a stamp on Miles' Venom Strike. Oh, I'm itching to fight. So, two to one, Peter. Superpowers are cool and all, but what if Miles and Peter just got into a straight up fist fight? Well, Miles Morales is an expert hand-to-hand -hand combatant, but Peter Parker is a master martial artist and is generally all around just more powerful than Miles. On top of that, Peter Parker is also considered a master of acrobatics, which only adds to his fighting skills. Furthermore, as I mentioned before, Peter has been in way more epic battles with way more expert villains. 
He has fought alongside the Avengers to save the universe and the multiverse. He's taken out rhinos and scorpions and ravens. Oh my. Peter has been cloned and died and resurrected and Doc Ock. You know, just all sorts of crazy and wild things that most heroes in the Marvel Universe will never experience. Now, Miles has accomplished some similar feats, and he has beaten up a ton of variants of famous Spider-Man villains, but if this were a video game, Miles has completed probably less than half the amount of crazy missions as Peter, boss battles included. Also, Peter Parker is immune to most contaminants, whereas it is not clear if Miles is or not. But okay, let's assume that neither guy is trying to poison the other in this fight. The edge still goes to Peter. Yeah, yeah, Peter's way up right now, three rounds to one. But there's always gotta be some sort of wild card that could change everything at the drop of a dime, right? Well, let's talk about it. Both Peter and Miles have X-Factors that sort of change the landscape of things if we were to imagine a fight taking place between the two. Let's start with Peter Parker. Remember just a few moments ago when I brought up the Master Weaver and how he believes in Peter's connection to the web of life? Well, Peter's role in the multiverse as a spider totem is basically divine in nature. Plus, his indomitable will has been described as godlike in the past as well. It's like Peter is more than a man or mutant or metahuman. It's as though the OG Spider-Man is some sort of deity trapped in the form of a friendly neighborhood spider nerd. He is considered the greatest of all the spider totems in the multiverse. That being said, Peter Parker has fallen victim to and had his mind infiltrated by the extraterrestrial symbiotes on more than one occasion. Keeping everything I just said in mind, Miles Morales does have one key factor over Peter, but the only way it would come into play is in a fight to the death. Not only that, but Miles would have to gamble on the fact that what I'm about to reveal even exists, and by then, it would be too late. This factor that I've oh so eloquently kept shrouded in mystery this whole time is that Miles Morales might just be a drum roll, please, drum roll, immortal, yes. Norman Osborn from the Ultimate Universe believes that it's entirely possible that Miles Morales may be unkillable. Move over Iron Man, the invincible Spider-Man is in town. Why does Norman Osborn think there's a possibility that Miles is immortal? Well, Norman has speculated that one of the side effects of the Oz formula, which was used to genetically modify the spider that bit Miles, is immortality. We don't know if Miles is truly immortal yet, but where there is smoke, there is fire. And the fact that, while it's been said, means it's likely true, especially when it comes to the comic books. So everything we've said, comparing Miles Morales and Peter Parker pound for pound thus far goes out the window entirely. Speaking of the comic books, perhaps the answer to who would win in a fight between Peter and Miles does not lie in the what ifs and the whatabouts. Maybe the answer lies right under our noses and on top of the pages. Have Spider-Man and Spider-Man ever fought each other in the comics? Well, sort of. In the Spider-Man series written by Brian Michael Bendis, and more specifically, issue number three, Peter and Miles were teamed up for a while before getting hot-headed with one another. After the heated exchange of words, Spider-Man knocked Spider-Man out cold. That's right, yeah, there's our video, see ya! Oh, wait, you want me to be more specific, okay, yeah. Well, it's like Peter and Miles were just kind of horsing around because their scrap was more like two brothers wrestling over the TV remote, except, uh, while well, they have superpowers. To end the disagreement, Miles Morales knocked Peter Parker out cold with a venom strike. Now, Miles did catch Peter off guard with this shot, and the two definitely did not see each other as legitimate threats. I mean, heck, some comic book fans even get mad in forums and on Reddit calling it a cheap shot and not legitimate proof that Miles would win at all. Now, I've laid down a bunch of evidence to make valid arguments for either spider guy, but it's fair to assume that if Peter was ready for it, he would not have gotten hit. I mean, you have to assume that if it truly came down to a life or death fight, or even a battle with the fate of the world or the universe on the line, Peter Parker would probably pull through. Peter has fought against the biggest and the baddest bad guys that the Marvel Universe has ever had to offer, and he's done it in comics, cartoons, movies, and heck, even in my dreams. 
Jokes aside though, I don't ever picture Miles and Peter fighting, but if they did throw down, I would bet my money on OG Spider-Man winning via decision. However, with all that being said, as far as we know, on paper, both literally and figuratively, it appears as though Miles Morales would beat Peter Parker up in a fight. And there you have it. Who do you think would win between Peter Parker and Miles Morales? Do you agree with our tale of the tape? Are there any fight facts that we left out? Tell us in the comments section below and hey, don't miss out on any combative comic content.